Pelanya, this is another devilogue for my roguelike adventure game, Nickel Quest. And this time I thought I'd give a little uh, description of like some of the events that can spawn in the game. And I guess the quests, Nickel Quest. And um, we can sort of show off. Ooh, there's a lot of them here. We can sort of show off how these are generated, and maybe that'll give a better idea for how these are working here. So let's. Yes, first of all, let's look at this event. This is the wildflower field. It generates like a field and a little house. Um, let's see how this works. So this event is um, sort of like one of the random events, I guess I'd call it. Um, so there's a few different ways of generating events. Of course there's probably many, but there's a few like main ones I'm using, so I'll go through a couple of those right now. So the way this one works is we have this little helper function, find free area. And we have a bunch of these for circle, square, whatever, rectangle, I guess. And what this does is it looks in the grid and it just automatically checks random positions with this size that you define. And so that can um, give you a free area. So we're not overriding other uh, events. And so we tell it which tiles to override. This case is ground. Um, if you spawn it in the desert, you want to have like sand and cactus. If it's the forest, you probably want ground and tree. Um, so based on the biome we spawn in, this one is only in the uh, in the grassland biome, so we only have ground here. Uh, if it can't find it, we just leave. That's fine because these events will all uh, there's going to be a lot of them, right? So when we have the preset, there's going to be a bunch of events listed out. Uh, here, I guess I, I can show you a preset. But yeah, we're going to have a bunch of events sort of listed out. Like, let's go to forest here. See these. And so we add the events to this little uh, map events list. And what this does is it shuffles them and then based on the difficulty, we'll talk about difficulty later, uh, it'll spawn them into the map, or at least try to spawn them in. And if it can't, that's fine. Because there's going to be a lot of them and hopefully by randomizing them, we'll get a good spread uh, and not just like the same event over and over in each tile, right? Okay, how does the wildflower field work? Uh, random colors, that's kind of cool, but we don't really care. So basically we just get the area, we generate a filled circle, so this gives you every tile in the radius of our spawn uh, area. And then we spawn things in there, we spawn the little blueberry bushes, we spawn uh, some different enemies, and the rest of them are just flowers. Then in the middle, as we saw, there's like a little house, right? A little, let's see, house here. And uh, we spawn that in, and again, this is just mostly helper functions, so we fill Fill direct for the floor and like the lines for the walls, and then we can add like windows and doors pretty easily. I think this whole house generation needs a helper function of its own. Because um, I seem to be doing it a lot, and like it's basically the same code for adding windows and doors and walls, and we could simplify it a lot, is what I'm saying. Anyway, um, then we generate some more stuff inside the house, actually spawn the enemies. And then we have to spawn them later for uh, for various reasons why. Why do we have to do it later? Um, so we don't overwrite them, so they don't spawn on top of like a bush, a uh, berry bush or whatever. Which I guess doesn't matter, they can still move, but anyway. Uh, and we have this cool little preset system for generating the colors, so we don't want like a red and a blue going together. So what we do is we have these little archetypes, we choose certain items from the archetypes, and and then we pass those in so it'll be like red, orange, yellow, yellow will be an archetype so it can spawn within that range of flowers. Or green and blue but not purple so it kind of makes a pleasant flower distribution. So that's the wildflower field. Um, next up we got the meteor field. Let me show you how this uh, works in the first place. So the meteor fields is sort of like a collection event I guess where, uh oh, there we go. And so you have this little house and like a little meteor vendor and the little items and you go to the meteors, you harvest the ore, the meteor- Oh, here, I'll get another one. Oh, I have to- There. Meteor exchange. Meteorite, there. We harvested mine some meteorite. And we can buy these items with it. So this is one of the, I guess like semi-randomly and semi-manually generated events. Uh, somewhat similar to the previous one, but you have a cool trick in here. So we find a big old field to spawn the meteors in. So we hopefully aren't like having meteors and then like another event in between them, like a Neko temple and then a meteor outside that. So they're all gonna be somewhat like self-contained is the hope. And um, we generate another building, the little shop in the middle. And um, that's all again, we should have another helper function for this. Generate the items uh, that you can purchase, the NPC that we spawn in. And so all these events, right, or not all of them, but some of them, they have little NPCs that you have to spawn in separately. 
Um, maybe I'll have a different video on NPCs, I don't know. They're not too interesting. Anyway, for the meteors, this is the cool part. So we have the rectangle of the area we actually want to spawn them in. And we have a number that we want, we want seven, and that's based on like, you know, the cost of these items and how many average uh, meteorite per meteor. Meteorite ore, I guess. Uh, and so what we do is we find the free area for the circle, right? This size, so they are spaced out by one. Um, we can spawn in the regular world or in the desert. A regular world, the plains or the desert. And then what we do, instead of just leaving this null, this last parameter, field direct. So this is the area we want to check within. So instead of the whole grid, we only check within this area. And that's a really cool feature. So the meters will be sort of in a contained space. So they're only so far from the actual little house in the middle. Um, and then we have this little thing to spawn them so they have a cool shape. That's about it for the meteor uh, meteor field and difficulty. We'll, we'll get back to difficulty. Okay. Last one up, we have the Neko Temple. All right, we're going out of order here, but that's okay. So the Neko Temple is gone. <laughs> um, let's see. Here it is. Okay, so the Neko Temple spawns like a little Nekos around the outside. It's a little temple. You go inside. It's like, oh, you're a Neko. It's a temple. Wow. And there's events that I don't want to spoil, so we won't spoil them. But... That's just of the event. The generation is the, is the part we're focusing on right now. So the main point is we have this layout, right? Well, yeah, it's a layout. It's a, it's a tile map, right? So these little M's are the little Nekos. These are the walls and like the floor. So uh, this is a sort of way to make preset buildings. And this is really powerful, right? Because instead of making something randomly generated and it can like vary each time, this is going to be the same every time. So for like preset buildings that we want to have a certain shape, like the Neko Temple, the little cat ears here, um, that's where we're using this. So what we do, same thing, we find a free area based on the dimensions of this little temple here. I think we go, oh no, we don't, so we can, we can line up against things on the edge. Um, and then we loop through that little tile array, right? So we find the actual source tile. Yeah, so this is the like letter, and then based on that letter, oh, I must have the positions. This is the position in the world. Uh, letter, position in the world. We set the result tile so that we set only once at the end here. Um, and then we set either a wall or uh, the door. I guess we're kind of spoiling things with the door, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, the Neko, like little statues and stuff. Uh, and we add these later, which again, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. <laughs> I guess to do the dialogues and stuff. It's just, it's easy to separate it. So the way this is working is we have the little array. Let's see here. Yeah, kitty, kitty locations. And then we use those later to spawn them in just so we can uh, sort of separate our sections. So it's like, this is for eating in the files, this is for spawning in these enemies, this is for spawning in the entities, stuff like that. That is our world generation. Those are some examples. I think that covers a good range of the uh, generation types that we're using in NecoQuest. Um, so hopefully that shined a little light on the way that these are working. So basically this phase of NecoQuest, what we're working on is just adding these events. So if you can see, let's see, events, yeah, world events. So we have these, um, and if we look at the map, if we look at our, oh, that's wrong. If we look at our, uh, our map here, it's bugged because we have to uh, <laughs> make it a real map. If we do a, do a real map here, here. Um, we have all this area, right? There's a seven by seven area. So this size can change. Um, I think seven by seven is a good size. Of course, you can have big pools like this, which will kind of nerf you. I might have to come up with a way to uh, fix that. Here's a better one, yeah. The current state of the game, right, is there's gonna be events in each tile, each grid. So this is one grid tile. This is 64 by 64 is each one of these little things up here. This is just for debug. This won't be in the final game, unless I forget to remove it. That's kind of interesting, the little thing on the edge there. Yeah. Um, so like these events, like there's only so many, I mean right now we have how many, like this, this many events <laughs> and you know, a seven by seven, that's 49 tiles. So even if we only have one event per tile, ooh, that's a cool one. There's a cool secret event I'll let you find yourself because there's secrets in there. Yeah, so even if we have, oh, one event per tile, we need 49 events to fill the whole world, assuming there's no water and mountains and impassable stuff, which may have events of their own. We see like we repeated this one like already. So ideally we're not gonna just be repeating events over and over. These are separate ones, but we saw this little flower circle earlier too. So I wanna have enough events such, such that, you know, the world isn't 
just the same event over and over. You know, you want to have maybe like one or two per world, or like two to three, I don't know. But not like so many that it's just like over and over. Uh, I want there to be variety, because that's like the whole point. And the whole fun is to explore these events and like world quests and stuff. Oh, here's a cool one, these little islands. I think I showed those before. Previous devilog. So yeah, there's another cool one. You saw the secret in there. Yeah, so anyway. Um, let me show the difficulty and then we'll wrap it up. So the way difficulty works, I oh, will need to open up a, uh, a preset. We talked about the layers and presets before. Y'all y'all know what's going on there. So the, uh, let's go for like the planes. Here we go. Okay, so you can see, so we have a new map event. I think this is defined somewhere. It's just a class with the actual layer itself and then the difficulty that we pass in. Um, here, I wonder if I can, difficulty. Um, oh frick, I ruined the, there we go, <laughs> the scroll. So, uh, I talked about this earlier, how it pushes into map events, we shuffle them and then based on the, or then we put on that, based on the difficulty. So, each event is going to have a different uh, difficulty based on how, like, sort of easy or hard it is. So some events, like the Lava, vol lava Golem Volcano, it's going to be pretty darn hard, that's like a, you know, 0.7. Or something, I don't know. It's, it's pretty high up there versus... Oh, spider crops is hard too because there's like a million spiders. Flower circle is like an easy one. It's probably like a point one or something. Um, so this is a way to make a natural progression through the world. So when you spawn in, you're going to get easy events like flower circle and like um, cat tacos, wildflower. Yeah, point zero seven. I guess that's like a pretty easy event. Um, what's it like? Neko temple maybe? Yeah, anyway. Oh, meteor, meteor Field, yeah. So these are some like easier events you'll run into earlier in the game. They'll help you get your items and your stats up and ready for the harder events, which, you know, enemies are just going to be way harder. So we can have a real progression through the world. And so the way these are set up, well, I guess I'll just show you on this thing here. So take the player spawn position. Let's make a new world and see if we can get a cool one. Yeah. So take the player spawn position. And we can spawn in a random position now. That's also part of this little, little update. Um... So yeah, say we're spawning here, we take each tile, we loop through them, get the distance to the player, and then we take the maximum distance, which is probably like this one right here, maybe, yeah, I don't know. And then we take that distance, divide everything by that to get a zero to one value. So player tile should be zero, farthest away tile should be one, everything in between, so like this might be like 0.5, this one would be point, uh, like 0.15 or something, this one might be like 0.4. Um, and so we spawn events based on the difficulty from their distance to player spawn pause. I guess that's a pretty simple concept. I just overcomplicated. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's for the progression through the world. So you want to explore your like home base starting tiles before you branch out and go uh, in a more difficult territory. And so the hope with this is that we get a good spread of dungeons. So even if this dungeon here, or this, uh, not dungeons, uh, quests, seem that this event here, this, um, little wildflower field we see it here but if we go like way over here it's not gonna repeat oh nice little forest here i like that um with no events in it we need more forest events but yeah so and now here here it will repeat i guess that's within the lenience but the farther you go it's not going to keep showing up it's going to show harder and harder dungeons uh the farther we are away there's a mountain oh yeah here we go so yeah this is the dragon temple with a secret that you shouldn't see um that only spawns like within a certain it's like 0.5 maybe difficulty and like the stick master i think is a little harder difficulty so things are spawning here's another one you see see the issue already right and the issue with that spawning again yeah anyway here's the mushroom uh forest which i guess is pretty high difficulty which makes sense um but i won't spoil that either and again i don't want to spoil the events because they're the whole fun is going to be finding them out yourself right the whole fun is going to be like playing through them Ooh, here's a unique event um mage like temple or whichever anyway i'm just playing around right now <laughs> Um, but I think that's it. Yeah, the difficulty. Oh, and so there's a lenience factor, right? So the difficulty here. Difficulty lenience. And so, you know, if your difficulty is like 0.5, you'll spawn in like 0.4 to 0.6 range. And so things have a, have a gradient to them. Anyway, I think we're dragging on. That's all for this devlog. Um, thanks for hanging out. If you have any ideas for events or any thoughts on this system, let me know. That is all. Bye now.